So, planetary message online. Um, there's more. <laughs> there's, that's my phone. That's my phone number. And that's my email and my website. And I think that's all I packed in here. How much time do I have, by the way? Uh, about another 15 minutes. Oh, good. Okay, good. All right. Um, okay. Who's having a problem selling something right now? In here. You, what do you sell? Photography services. Okay. And why is it hard? Everybody has a camera phone in their pocket. Okay. All right. And they want to be on the front row. They stick it up in the air. Uh huh. They block all the professionals trying to do their job. Okay. And so that's, that's a problem for you. Right. Okay. Okay. What kind of photography do you, do you sell? Um, all kinds of event photography, um, portrait photography. Okay. Photojournalist. You're a photojournalist. You do weddings? I try not. Okay. <laughs> I just specialize. I just specialize what you do. Um, I specialize in, in sports events, motorsports. Okay. Which is something that a lot of people don't do. Mm -hmm. um, I travel nationally in order to do Okay. But I also do, for the local market, I do event Okay. Event photography. Um, something like that, you know, when, when you're selling something that, uh, what's your name? Charles. Charles. What Charles is, is kind of putting up with is people are taking their own cameras and kind of going out and doing their own thing. And um, you want to stand out in a crowd like that. You want to become specialized. And what I like to do with my sales copy is I want to make myself different from anybody else. I want to make that differentiation immediately. Um, I became a specialist in what I do. I didn't want to be selling websites at the cheapest price point, because a lot of people do that. And um, what I start to do is I start to focus on becoming, uh, making my clients you know, popular. I'm, I'm, selling, I say, I'm selling popularity. On one hand, you could say I sell websites and I sell advertising, but really at the end of the day, I'm selling popularity. I'm selling speed. And I can actually get my clients on the first page of Google pretty fast. Uh, when I say fast, I mean under an hour. So, yeah, I sell advertising, and I do copywriting, and I do blogs, and I do all that stuff, and web video. But really, at the end of the day, I sell speed. And when I, when I did that, my whole game changed. My price changed, too. My price changed for that. Um, anybody can put a website together more or less, these days, you can buy a template. But the stuff that I was doing with them was much different. When I did that, I had to change my classification, and it worked for me. So you can actually reflect that in your, in your sales copy. Any kind of specialization that you do, you, know, you, can, uh, you can put that in there. Anybody else sell anything they're having a hard time with? What do you sell? I want, um, sell foreign language classes and cultural awareness. Wow. And um, I was doing okay until this year, mm -hmm. and I lost three major contracts. So okay. I had the hardest time trying to uh, get back where I was. Right. Okay. So what's your plan? Um, well, right now I am um, trying to make things, I'm um, revising my business plan and trying to make my company a little bit more scalable and um, useful. So I'm trying to develop software, but right now it's hard to just uh, sell me. I have mobile language learning centers where I go to the different places and I have online language learning centers where the children can connect online. Just press releases, uh, article writing, that's what I want here. Okay, what's, what's so slowing you down right now? Besides losing your clients. It's my biggest threat right now because um, a lot of the people want it, they love it, they get it, and then but they can't afford it. Um, and I. I'm not the most accessible, I'm not the cheapest because of the value of that you get. Mm -hmm. Because of my um, value proposition for my company. Um, but I don't have the, I'm not, the language isn't there to convince. Because it's, I feel like my industry is still sort of, parents don't get it, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. you, your child needs to learn a foreign language. This is not a luxury anymore. Mm -hmm. So I can't get the, the wording right to the language right that you're talking about. 
Today. You're not you're not framing yourself right. I'm not framing myself. No, and here's a, here's the thing. Wording is wrong. Okay, here's what you want to do. You want to think about in the future. You're, you're selling what's going on now, and you're thinking about the economy, and that's holding it back. Those are excuses. What I would do if I was you, I would look at um, projection. I go to the library. I would look at uh, the job trends. I would look at what's it going to be like ten years from now, twenty years from now. Uh, you know, are we going to have language problems <laughs> in a sense? Right now in California, there's a lot of Latinos right now taking over the economy in, in more sense. A lot of jobs. Um, direct mail has changed in the last 20, 30 years. The average Latino family would only receive like three pieces of direct mail. Three pieces out of like the average Caucasian would get like 100 to the three. <laughs> Which is like, you know, now those numbers are changing. You need to express the importance of that to parents who really care uh, at that level. And um, you need to communicate that. And, and I, I can guarantee you, that I can argue this back and forth. I mean, no one needs my services, really. Do they need better websites? There's always going to be someone cheaper. Um, but to do what I do, I get results, and i got to sell that. So I frame myself a little differently than most people. And I do that so I can get a response. And you, gotta build, you have to build that connection with, with people. And you have to have some belief there. It's a little scary. You know, and um, a good friend of mine one time asked me a long time ago when when 911 happened and I lost my job and I had to learn how to do all this stuff, direct response and copywriting and SEO and everything. He asked me, "Have you ever stepped out in the middle of nothing before?" Because he was scared. He didn't want to take that challenge, and um, I had nowhere else to go, so I, I had to do it. But um, you have to have a belief there. Sales company is a great place to do that. You don't have to beat someone over the head and say, I got the lowest price. Sales copy, you can project quality in that. And um, the whole point is to keep it hypnotizing and to keep them reading. I'm going to give you some, uh, some famous books that I, from my personal library you might want to read. Um, Hypnotic Writing by Joe Vitale, that's a good one. I like that one. That's a, it's, a, it's a good guide. Um, there's another girl named Veloso, Marie Veloso, I think her name is. She's a very good copywriter. It's V A V E L O S S O. She writes web copy. That's not a bad book. That's actually pretty good. And um, conceptually, if you want to learn how to sell conceptually, um, there's ten good ideas out of uh, one of Dan Kennedy's books. It's a white book on how to sell an OPS sales guide. That's not a bad one. But the Joe Vitale one would really help you uh, frame <coughs> your sales offer. Um, think about what people buy. I mean. Think about how you're selling your stuff too. If you're going to sell it as a product, as a, a one-time purchase, maybe you have a membership site. Maybe it's a continuity program. You sell, you charge thirty bucks a month. It's low cost, but yet the kids can come back and get a new thing every month. Uh, or maybe it's a newsletter uh, package that you sell out. You know, um, package up your stuff and then get it to a, a fulfillment center and have them ship it out. Um, continuity is a great, a really great way to make money. You know, you get yourself two hundred clients or two hundred families. At 40 bucks a pop, you know, you're doing okay. So, I don't know, that's just something I, you want to think about how you're selling it. And um, there's people out there who want, uh, <laughs> look at QBC if you don't believe me. Yeah, if you ever run out of uh, things to do, watch QBC. People buy pretty much everything. There's a great thing you can also do too. Let me give you a free one. This is a good thing to do. Check out, um, you know, on, on, on Google PPC, how they have the, the ads, people pay for the ads. You know the um, Google AdWords, okay? All right. Type in what is it? Language. Um, language one is the name. Okay. So, but you're teaching language. Um, learn Spanish or learn yeah. Italian. Okay. Type it in. See. Uh, follow. Follow the ads for a week. See what ads still stay on there for a week. Pick out the winners. The ones that are still on there are the ones that are making money. Whenever someone tries to sell a package like what you have, they always want to go online. Take that ad. Write one very similar to that, but don't run it online. Run it in print. Go to a trade journal association or a trade association where you can send that blast ad up to 400 newspapers. Where you have less competition that way. That's that's a good thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. But but also I would look into also to how you're selling it. I would sell it differently. You know, if you, if you sell somebody one big box and one big price. That's good, but if you can drag it out, you know, that might be better. So I don't know, try that. Anyone else?